let's debunk some social media marketing myths for small business. So yes, let's address the elephant in the room. I get it. My claim to fame marketing wise is doubling a business in size during a pandemic when my entire industry was shut down on a zero dollar a month marketing budget without relying on social media. And so there tends to be this idea that I don't really do social media marketing. That's not true. Social media has always been a piece of our marketing, but it has always been a piece of it. We've never relied on it. And frankly, social media is and continues to be an accelerant of what we are doing elsewhere. And it will do the same for you. There's a lot of advice out there about how to use social media marketing for small businesses. Most of it is just plain overwhelming. Some of it is scarily wrong. So let's address some of this. Now, my number one tip before I get too far down any of these rabbit holes is the most important thing for you to take away from this entire video is that you have to start taking action on your social content. If you want to actually start getting results, if you want to actually start using it to accelerate the networking events you're going to, the events you're participating in, the campaigns you're sending out, mailers, emails, etc., you're going to have to start just putting out material on social media. And it's probably not going to get great engagement right off the bat, and that's okay. You don't even necessarily have to figure that out within a month or two months. I would recommend just start putting material out. You can learn from it as you go and get better and better. You don't need to be great at it overnight. It's when we try to figure out how to get all of the moving pieces figured out, that's when we tend to stall out and do nothing, in which case, yeah, of course it doesn't work. So myth number one is this idea that you need to choose the platform based on your audience. This is a myth because it's just incomplete. There are two sides to choosing the platforms you want to be on for social social media. I'm going to give you a little bit of freedom right off the bat and say you don't need to be on all of them or even most of them. Pick the platforms, maybe the top two or three that you actually care about being on, and then focus on developing those. If you have a scheduling program that allows you to send it out to the other platforms, you're welcome to, but you do not have to send it out to all of the platforms. And when you're choosing your platform, yes, I do want you to keep in mind where your audience is, but the piece that no one talks about is when you're choosing the marketing platform or the social media platform for your small business, you need to be choosing the platform based on where you are too. All of the stats in the world can say you need to be on TikTok. If you're not on TikTok, you as the person who is doing the marketing for your business is not actively on TikTok, enjoying the content, being part of that community, you're gonna struggle to get any traction for your business there. So yes, I want you to look at where, what platforms is my audience hanging out on? Sure, but more importantly, I want you to ask yourself, what platforms are you hanging out on? And if the truth is you don't do any of these platforms, you either probably need to look at outsourcing it or just leaving it off the table entirely until you get other pieces going. Don't use it as a crutch to say, oh, well, we're marketing because we have stuff on social media if you're not actually engaging on those platforms to make sure that you're making the most out of them. So our second myth is that content is about consistency. Now, if you've been following my channel for any time, you know that I talk heavily about the fact that creativity matters far more than consistency. But this idea that in order to get growth on social media, you just need to post every single day or three times a day or however many times per day is it's trying to tell you you need to post is just honestly BS. First and foremost, this is social media. Social being the operative word here. This is not a place to yell at people. This is not a place to like project out to people. It's about a place to start a conversation, to have a conversation with people, to put out good and entertaining content. People come to social media to be entertained. TikTok actually like threw the world on its head a couple years back when they said, we don't consider our competitors to be Facebook or Instagram. We consider our competitors to be Netflix. Like everyone was losing their mind over this in the marketing world because they were like, oh my gosh, they're, they basically just told us how their algorithm works. The more entertaining your content, the more reach you're gonna get. And the other platforms work pretty much the same way. When we try to focus on consistency over creativity, we tend to put out really crappy content for the sake of putting it out there. Not only does that tell the platform that our account is less good because people aren't engaging with content, you put out 10 posts, people engage with one of them, you've just told the platform that your content, only one in 10 is any good. So it's gonna be a lot more hesitant to actually push your content out there. So stop putting out content just for the sake of putting out content. I think this myth came from the real realization that a lot of times if small business owners will just put out enough content, something is eventually going to pick up and get them attention. But in all reality, that's just not how the platforms are working anymore. So it's no longer about consistency. It's about getting creative with your content and making sure the content you're putting out is good. If you're only posting two or three times a week, that's 
fine. Myth number three is that vanity metrics or going viral is what matters most. So let's talk about the going viral thing first, because here's the problem with going viral. You end up a lot of times with followers and engagement that doesn't translate. You have people who followed you because you posted a really funny video about a dog, but your business is about bookmarks. And so now you have people who are following you for pet content and you're trying to push bookmarks. So now they're not engaging with you. And almost all of the platforms have a thing where they will push your content out to the people who follow you first to see what kind of engagement you get from the people who already like you before they will start pushing it out to people who go beyond that. So if you have a bunch of followers who want dog content, you're pushing out bookmark content. See where the problem is? You're not going to get a lot of reach inside of your own followers, which means it's not gonna get a lot of reach outside of your followers either. So going viral is actually definitely a double-edged sword. Additionally, let's say you do go viral for something that you actually do. Like, let's say you go viral for your bookmarks. Well, that can then cause problems where maybe you create bad user experiences because you went viral, you sold out, now no one could get your product, or you sent out the wrong stuff, or whatever. So many problems. So going viral is not the key that it is. And vanity metrics like number of followers or um, those are not the numbers that anyone really should be caring about. I care a lot more about how much engagement each each individual post is getting than how many total followers there are on an individual account. I care a whole lot more about how much reach we're getting than I do about whether or not we've managed to go like viral with millions and millions of views. I will say that it is really important to make sure that you are tracking metrics when it comes to your social media. So you should be tracking how many posts per month are we making? How much engagement are we getting overall? Which posts are getting the most engagement? You can track how many followers you have overall, but just don't make that the biggest number that you're paying attention to. One of my favorite metrics to track, because it tells me how really, really hooky the content is, is how many shares and comments are we getting. Likes are one thing. Those are great, but likes are easy to get. I have to create a real emotional connection with someone to get comments and shares. Those are the two metrics that I focus on most when it comes to my social media. And I've noticed that as long as I'm focusing on that, I can start to pay attention to what I'm putting out that sparks people to want to comment, that sparks people to want to share, and our content goes a lot further.